Hey, it's working. We're live. Look at us. We're here. We've done it again. Uh, I've made it back from from the land of uh, Western Virginia's. How was it? It was great, actually. I I enjoyed West Virginia. It's it's very pretty down there. Mm. You know, there's uh, it, it's kind of all the stuff I like about Pennsylvania, but a little bit a little bit more rural, like. That makes sense. It's Harper's Ferry was like if you took St. Pete's mm-hmm. and just made it much bigger. Interesting. Yeah, like I mean, it's only got a population of like two hundred some, mm. but St. Pete's is a population of like twenty some. So it sounds like a lot of like northern and central Pennsylvania. Yeah, definitely. But it was nice. It was it was nice to nice to get away. Nice to do something else. Unfortunately, I got way 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 behind on research for our channel, but it's fine because. I have just, uh, you know, resigned myself to the fact that I'm going to spend most of tomorrow in front of a computer screen. But it's fine. It's Good fine. Luck. It's I'll be fine. I'll live. I'll survive. <laughs> you'll survive. You'll thrive mm-hmm. even. Hopefully. Potentially. Yeah. But the good news is while I was uh, away, I got to do a little bit more, a little bit more research into our, our new favorite topic here on this channel, which is... Um, Tartaria, the, the place that did not exist. <laughs> and, uh, Aiden, I don't know how much, how, how in-depth you were listening to it while editing it, but the, did you happen to have a favorite part of this? <sighs> Gosh. Cold, I couldn't tell you right off the bat, but there are just so many, like, little tidbits, like, oh, what comes to mind first? Well... There's the whole thing about the Ark, which mm-hmm. just was great. <laughs> just really fun. The Ark of the Covenant is just suddenly a, a super weapon. Just, I mean... And literally the one from Indiana Jones. Yes, yeah. And I, I was glad that I got the opportunity to utilize some of mm-hmm. that. But, and then the elements of the maps from a little bit earlier in the video where we're talking about, you know, the, the civilizations in North America mm-hmm. that may or may not have existed. The weird back and forth about the relevance of Atlantis mm-hmm. was interesting. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that I think I'll be able to react to more so than call call yeah. it cold. But what what stuck out most to me in the entire video was the lack of a coherent chronology mm. was so evident, and there were so many points at which he said things that really just contradict other things he had already said. And in in doing that, one thing that I've seen that has interested me most is the criticisms of the video. A lot of people have been like, oh, well, you picked one of the, you know, one of the most out out there creators you could have. Mind Unveiled's crazy. And I was like, Mind Unveiled is who I was told to look at. Yeah. Mind Unveiled is one of the biggest ones. Like, if I was going to confront any of it, you can't you can't look at me and go, oh, well... That's just the really crazy version of the conspiracy theory. There's all these other versions. Well, no, it's also also the most prolific version of the scenes. Well, that's the thing is you asked the community yep. who to go to, and thus you were directed to Mind Out Veil. And I will point out as well, I'm in the video we covered. Yes. Because they use that segment from Charlie. So picking Mind Unveiled was a, a choice that was made for a number of reasons. However, I do want to reiterate if anyone has a channel that they feel like presents a better case than Mind Unveiled mm-hmm. and can give me a video that actually summarizes the argument, doesn't just give me a bunch of disconnected points mm-hmm. and claim that they all fit together, I will happily go take a look at that. Part of the reason I went with Mind Unveiled was that they actually did offer a full hour-long summary of the theory. And I was I, I needed a full hour-long summary of the theory. I didn't need I actually didn't need it to be an hour long, but I just needed something that actually put all of the points together because what I find with this one is that it is almost impossible to get that in one place. You know, uh, I know we do these on a really tight turnaround. Did mm-hmm. you get any, by any chance, attempt to reach out to Mind Unveiled as a channel or a creator or anything? No. Fair. I I, I chose not to. Um, I, I do not like the way that he talked about Jews fair at all so um it 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 he really takes it just to the edge of where it would be outright like holocaust denial okay so i'm i'm not okay with that i'm not cool with that i mean i, I would have a conversation with the guy 
if only to you know explain to him in real time why he's wrong Hmm. but I, i mean there's just there's so much in it that and you you know me i'm i'm absolutely not the kind of person who jumps to calling anybody a racist yeah it came across to me as a deliberate like sort as it being a you know a pro aryan message were there and when like, you look at what he says throughout the video talking like he uses the term aryan could could easily use the term indo-european repeatedly chooses to say aryan um there's also the fact that this entire thing rewrites history so that people aren't emerging civilization isn't emerging out of the middle east it's emerging out of western europe it's it's one of those things that like just believing it does not necessarily imply that you are a racist but (laughs) (laughs) we don't want another world war there's enough in here that kind of just approximates the line Mm-hmm. that i felt i felt uncomfortable with with the motive behind this existing especially knowing the fact that there is some russian supremacy to it because oh yeah this whole thing was i mean Fomenko and a lot of this a lot of the people who have pitched this kind of rewriting of history into focusing on an ancient civilization in russia have been people who are trying to make give russia its own national ethnic identity outside of european Mm. and to claim that they were the you know they're the descendants of the progenitor or master race kind of idea so you know whenever whenever that type of Mm -hmm. you know behavior and like a message starts getting thrown around you know you might be in the wrong spot definitely also it did occur to me there is a change that i wanted to bring up that i want to make to the show format that I, I decided we should adopt after my time on Pop Culture Crisis. Okay. $20 Super Chats, anything above $20, we will read when it comes in. Okay. I think that seems fair, and it also allows us to focus on Super Chats at the end more, because we won't have these. But yeah, um, but we'll, we'll do that from this point on, because okay. I just said it. But yeah. Um, it just occurred to me, I meant to say at the beginning of the show, my brain is scrambled. That That is what it is. But we'll be taking $20 Super Chats when they come in now. I think that was a, a good way. And it also sometimes allows, you know, a, a bit of an important break in the show's format, which I think is important. Fair. <laughs> yeah, but for this, for this episode, because of what it was, I think we're going to try and keep it at a bit more of a, um, a Q&A format i'm definitely still going to go through this whole process but i would love for people as i talk through things if there was something in the friday video or something that i say that you have questions make sure to throw it in there and aiden if you want to you know if you see something that's yeah, coming sure. up, let me know we do have one twenty dollar super chat sure. that came in let's see look at it uh it says uh there, there is there is a homeless man who lives outside of my apartment complex in the woods i'm convinced he's a cia <laughs> operative what do you think? Flesh pedestrian, perhaps? <laughs> but I'm going to revise and say, perchance. Perchance. Um, I, I mean, it's also, it seems very possible that it is just a homeless man living in the woods. He may need a meal. He may just need a meal, yeah. yeah. I would not recommend becoming the meal. No. But homeless people are just people most, yep. of, the, most of the time. <laughs> any, any contact we've had yeah i've just i've yet to who... contact a, a homeless person who was something other than a homeless person <laughs> but, yeah yeah but uh please please do not assume your local homeless man is a flesh pedestrian <laughs> give give the opportunity of the benefit of the doubt in that kind of scenario because if yeah. anybody needs it it's someone who is currently without a home yeah so I think, you know, to get to get us into the, the content for today, I think that I should probably open with that definition for those who came to today's show and have not seen the video mm-hmm. we put up Friday, they aren't familiar with Tartaria as a concept, I'm going to give you the definition that is given in, in that video <laughs> from Mind Unveiled, Fair. the one that we were given. Um, so let me see if I can find the actual thing that I had, because um, I know I had the... Where is it? There we go. 
Uh, they define it as the phenomena or category of alternative history that delves into the research of lost history and civilizations, hijacks and stolen buildings, magic, alchemy, and cloning, antiquitech, cataclysms, mud floods, buried buildings, star forts and fortified cities, royal bloodlines and secret brotherhoods, asylums, orphans and odd fellows, underground tunnels and waste management, and suppressed Moorish history. I'd love to know where the cloning comes in. Oh, it comes in. They just didn't provide any uh, any of it in the segment that we covered. The next Tartaria video we do, which will be covering the evidence they present at the beginning of that video for some reason, instead of presenting it at the end. Does it have anything to do, in their opinion, with the whole uh, capturing atmospheric electricity? Uh, no, that seems to be a disconnected thing. Okay. It's a lot of what it is, is uh, they're at the World's Fair in, I think it was uh, Paris in like 1900 or something. Okay. They were uh, incubators for babies being on display. And the Tartarian, <laughs> you already know where this is going. The Tartarian people <laughs> are convinced that the incubators were for actually growing babies from embryos, that they were cloning people. That's what the incubators were for. Not that they were a major medical advancement in keeping premature babies uh, and babies born with deficiencies alive. So Tartaria is literally just an example of people looking at things completely out of context from the past. Almost exclusively. And then devising a reason for their existence without elaborating or investigating any further. Mm -hmm. It's it, it really is, and that is what I was running into time and time again as I researched it, was every single time it was somebody with no knowledge of a subject sees something and then just extrapolates how it's connected to other things incredible it's it's like if you knew that the pyramids were built you knew that the jews left egypt and you knew that uh that atlantis sank and you decided to connect all three of those things that the jews built the pyramids to remember atlantis or something like that like that it, you just started a new yeah exactly thing. also we just got another Here, you uh, read it? Super Chat. Yeah, it's 2069 from cooper stewart says, boys, we need bulk buying options for the Pocono Percussi. Like, five pound bags. Um, I have been talking to Matt from Tableau, and we can do wholesale. Mm. It just, it it would have to be like a more special order kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But if, if people are going to order five pound bags, then I'm sure we could sell five pound bags. It's just yeah. a matter of, is the demand there? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I can... <laughs> we can run a poll. Yeah, we can um, see about it. If you haven't tried Mount Pocono Perk yet, I really do highly recommend it. That's what we're both drinking Thank right now. Know. I just finished mine. It, it It is the only coffee I drink. And it's it's not because I get it for any cheaper than Walla. It, it, I think this is... I am actively paying more for our coffee than it would cost me to buy a bag of Colombian at Walla. Because it's just that worth yeah. it. And Walla like, is decent coffee. It is decent coffee over there. So the fact that I'm going out of my way to order this mm -hmm. from Kentucky, I promise you it is it is worth trying. <laughs> Love it. Uh, but yeah, so to, to kind of get back into things, the, the buried buildings, the antiquitech, all of this stuff really does come from a place of simply not knowing. Mm-hmm the story behind something and making assumptions because you saw it. Yeah. It's there. There's no actual evidence for 90% of the stuff that they say. And what happens often is they'll say something. I'll see it. Mm -hmm. I'll debunk it. And then somebody who still buys into this stuff comes along and says, well, you didn't provide a source. Mm. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> using their source pot kettle. Like, <laughs> You showed me a picture claiming it depicted a buried building. Yep. I showed you the story that it's not a buried building. It was them expanding, or that it was them digging out a hillside to expand a city westward. Mm. Like, and they had to build a new foundation. I explained to you what happened. You can go and independently verify everything I said. I'm collecting everything he said and telling you the truth. Yeah. If you want to go fact check me, go ahead. But... I'm fact-checking him. Yeah. Like, 
And for the next video, maybe I will. Maybe I will include a source for every single thing I say. Well, you do reference things, just not specific, like, Well, I don't have a bibliography written in, yeah. basically. But yeah, I saw uh, Plaz said something yeah, as well. Yeah, Plaz said for 20 bucks, I have true pity for the gourd you'll be incubating homoculus clone oh, in. Oh, God, no. I really want to like this Tartaria stuff because somatics and frequency slash resonance are super interesting, but overall there's a lot of yikes. It is majority yikes. There's it a is. few things in there that you're like, it's kind of interesting. Also, I will say, um, I did I did say that wood does not collect, conduct electricity, and wood can conduct electricity. My point was that wood cannot collect atmospheric electricity and be used as a a circuit to store it. Like, yeah. um, you you would not be able to use a wooden mast to do the kind of thing that they were claiming. No. And also, a lot of the stuff that they were showing was using non-conductive stone. Yes. There's a reason that your material goods that require electricity are not made from wood. It yeah. is generally an insulator, not a conductor. Yeah. And also, like, limestone does yeah. not conduct electricity. <laughs> a lot of this stuff was limestone. Oh, but yeah, it's all it's all so fun. But the I mean to go to start where they started, the the Irish thing and the the Phoenician hijinks is what they the or the, sorry not hijinks the Phoenician hijack, the Phoenician hijack. I like to them, the name Phoenician hijinks a lot more. Yeah, to be true. honest with you, the Phoenician hijack, according to them, is that everything that the Irish, the ancient Irish, supposedly did, mm -hmm. was taken from the Irish and reapplied to the Canaanites later on. Now, that does seem to maybe stem from the labor the uh, I was corrected on this pronunciation today. Lauer Lauer the Lauer Gavalana Lauer Gavalana Aaron it's uh, I'm trying my best, but uh it's a book, the Book of Invasions. Yes. It's the Book of the Takings of Ireland. Yeah. Um, you could probably just save yourself a lot of time and just say that. True, yeah, yeah, I know. I just, I was taught, <laughs> trying my best. I know, um, you are. That does say that people from uh, Phoenicia, mm -hmm. it says that, it, it says, not even Phoenicia, it just says one of Noah's, like, it's Noah's son-in-law or something like that. It's an invented biblical character. His name's Bith. Not real. Not in the Bible. Interesting. Uh, is sent to Ireland to escape the flood. This is obviously not biblical. It was written into the story sometime in the early Middle Ages. That seems to be where they're getting this. Mm. Is that little little thing because there are rep, rep. This does repeat. You do get you know people coming from the Levant into Ireland on a few occasions in this story, but this is not a real history. Yeah, this is a pseudo history. There's no archaeological evidence backing it up. There's no linguistic evidence backing it up. There's no genetic evidence backing it up. So they're focusing on it solely because they read a few things that suggest it. But all of the other information, all of the hard evidence isn't there. Mm. And they just do this consistently. Every single time you look at one of these stories, one of these, um, one of these conspiracy theories, they always ignore archaeology, genetics, um, anthropology they there is no study of harder sciences and even within history they go and they pull historical documents people who are writing about stuff in the 18th and 19th century mm -hmm. so they'll cite somebody who was writing in 1830 as an authority on things that were later fully explained yeah by other scientists other historians at a later date but they're citing the older guys because it fits the narrative better it fits the narrative better um, and I think that's what's frustrating to me as a historian, as a researcher, is looking at this and going, all right, well, everything you're saying has been explained. Mm -hmm. Now what you're doing is you're not saying, you know, that's that we don't know, mm -hmm. and here's my speculation. Mm -hmm. I have no problem if you look at the evidence and there's no conclusive evidence. There's no, uh, you, you don't know for sure what happened, so you go, hmm, maybe it was this based on the evidence. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. This guy is ignoring the evidence, or worse, cherry-picking from the evidence. Mm -hmm. And then coming up with a theory that is contradicted by the very documents he uses. For example, in one of them, he says that we don't have any copies of Pliny the Younger from before, I think, 1471. The very article he's citing within the same line of text, same paragraph, says 
that the people who wrote down that manuscript mm -hmm. were working off of older manuscripts. I gotta say, from from what I was seeing as I was editing the video, mm -hmm. and I had I had the original video in another window as reference. Mm -hmm. As I was following along what you were saying and editing and finding images to mm -hmm. support what you were talking about or the images that you're specifically referencing that were in, sure. you know, um, on Unveil's video, as I was watching his video, what I was noticing, it seemed to me from my editor's perspective mm -hmm. that whoever was narrating it did not edit it. Mm -hmm. It seems like the narration was done and that research was done. Mm -hmm. And then it was given to an editor that then was told to find relevant images, yeah. kind of like what we do, because there were image, images that were not directly relevant, mm -hmm. but were just kind of generally involved. Yeah. And then obviously there were those differentiations and those misalignments between certain things the narration said and some of the things that were shown on screen, like that one map right. where the narrator correctly addresses the Sent date. It. Yeah. Whereas the date on screen is wrong. Right. So, yeah. That's so guess. that's, see, that's worse though, because I was giving him the benefit of the doubt with that map. Mm -hmm. And that means that the narrator actually did know that yeah. the map was dated to 1587 and still thought it was weird that there were European settlements in Florida. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gave him the benefit of the doubt. And and this is what I got. Because remember, I texted you at that point. And I was like, "Hey, like, yeah, he said the right date." And then you were like, "Check the bottom of the screen." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, it's written in there that it's wrong." Yep. Oh, it's just so frustrating. And I mean, with, with the Ireland one is such a sticking point for me too, because the Gales definitively were not there until extremely recently mm. in historical terms. Yeah. Considering that the Brythonic Celts were probably there from about 3000 BC. Mm -hmm. If, I mean, the latest possible date, I think is 1500 BC. I did see one comment what? that I'm curious about your take on it, which was somebody was challenging you on the fact that the Romans never got to Ireland. That I never said the Romans never got to Ireland. No, no, no. I think they were thinking that you said that they did get to Ireland. I said the Romans never had a prolonged conflict with the Irish. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because somebody in the comments was like, the Romans never got to Ireland. The Britons held them off. Well, so here's here's where the question is. It's possible that there was a Roman landing in Ireland, mm -hmm. but no conflict Got it. that I'm aware of. Um, I can't remember it. If, I can't remember the details. I just remember it being that it was either that the Romans never did land in Ireland or they did, but it was extremely brief and they left. Um, but there was no prolonged conflict with the Irish. Hmm. That, that, that was the point. Got it. Um, I, I'm not positive. It's been a while since I looked into the exact details, but I'm not positive if they ever got to the, uh, the actual island itself. I know they were aware of the fact that there was an island there and that there were people there, but I don't recall the exact... Yeah, do you want to look that up? Because I'm here. I'll I'll yep. look it up if you want to. <laughs> um, uh, did let's see, did the Romans ever land in Ireland? Um, let's see, some historians argue that the Romans invaded Hibernia in more subtle ways. Not really what I was looking for. Um, but yeah, my my. What I was remembering was, okay, awareness stretches back to the first century BC. Um, let's see, the closest they came was, oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I had it. I had it. Do you want to pull this up on? Uh... Now nah, I'm just going to read something. Fair enough. Closest they came was 20 years after the invasion of Anglesey when Agricola uh, and another governor eyeballed the north coast of Ulster from the trackless wastes of Galloway. According to Tacitus, Agricola's son-in-law, the governor brazenly remarked that Ireland could have been conquered and occupied by a single legion with a few auxiliaries. So yeah, it looks like they never actually even went to Ireland. They just kind of saw it. Mm. Um, let's see. Some archaeologists have suggested that Agricola uh, established a bridgehead at Drum, 
I have no idea. An hmm. Iron Age promontory fort that juts into the Irish Sea near Rush, some 20 kilometers north of Dublin. So this, yeah, that's what I meant, is that there's, it's possible they landed, but um, that they never actually had any conflict there. Got it. There we go. Uh, where was I? Hi, buddy. We were generally rough, roughly around the, the book of the takings of Ireland and how yeah. that differentiates from... Yeah. Well, that's the thing with the Back. that book too is like it's obvious it's obvious that this is not historically accurate. It's obvious a man didn't turn into a salmon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but also, you look at older versions of the story, and if you just go back a few hundred years to Nennius, who was writing in the I want to say the eighth or the ninth century, um, his version of the story the the Book of Invasions has six invasions. Nennius has three. Mm. So there's. There's a difference here. You know, it seems that things were added and there's a Christian concept of the six ages of the world. And it looks like the the book of the takings of Ireland was written to fit the six ages. But he also doesn't like he doesn't reference certain things that are also in the book. There's talk of the Fearbolg and the um, he talks about the Atlanteans. The Fearbolg are sorry, he does not mention them. He says that the the Atlanteans landed in Ireland mm -hmm. and mixed with the cultures already there. Well, 11,600 years ago, there were no cultures there. Um, so was this flood more recent than that? Okay, well, when was it? Also, we, we know that the period between 476 AD and somewhere in the 1400s, according to these these theorists mm -hmm. that period didn't happen rome did though so when did this all happen yeah is the big question if you ask anatoly fomenko troy and the crusades are the same event which anatoly fomenko is one of the people that this theory is based on yeah but we know that that's inaccurate mm -hmm. if troy and the crusades are the same event when did everything happen? <laughs> because that, it, it makes no sense. Yeah. Especially since we have archaeological evidence of both of those things, and they're not in the same place. Well, also, didn't you say in the video that, you know, uh, Troy happened over a, spirit, a period of, like, decades, whereas the Crusades a happened... A decade. A decade, whereas the... Two centuries. Yeah. Yeah. There, um, There's also just no difference between the two. Like, or no difference, no similarities between the two. Mm. They're completely different events in every possible way yeah different motivations different style of combat different cultures fighting each other everything about them is different and this is where i get so bugged with this theory is people ask me okay well what about the in, you know debunk the individual points what about the buildings that we can't reconstruct and then i say which buildings and it's always, oh, well, you know, archae arch architects have said that there's all these buildings that we couldn't build. Which ones? Well, you're not an architect. <laughs> like, and the thing is... They, they jump to the end mm -hmm. after you're debunking. It's like, they're assuming you're already going to do it. Exactly. They, yeah. Like, But that's the thing is, if you, a lot of them will uh, cite the Colosseum. And the thing is, it's not that we couldn't build the Colosseum today. It's that we couldn't build the Colosseum out of the concrete we have today and have it last that long. Yeah. So you might say, oh, well, that means we don't have the technology to build it today. No, no, no. We have the technology to build it today. It's not that we can't put it together. Yeah. It's that we weren't sure how to get it to stay together that long. Yeah. Until recently. Until very recently when we figured out exactly what they were putting in. It was chunks of limestone or right. something like that um, that were managing to keep the concrete from falling apart after well time. so and I, I don't know how much you looked into it but i did to some extent so a large portion of why concrete a lot of the time fails today mm -hmm. is because due to the load stresses that are on concrete mm -hmm. structures we reinforce it with steel rebar. rebar yep and that no matter how well the concrete's made will expand and contract over time due mm -hmm. to uh you know heat mm -hmm. and cold and things like that which then makes cracks and then moisture gets in and then that causes it to rust, right. which then expands it further, cause pieces to fall off, everything like that. If we were just making things out of just concrete, they'd be able to stand a lot more time. 
But the Romans used limestone, mm -hmm. which then acted as essentially because limestone is so water soluble in the sense of it's very easy to erode mm -hmm. away. Anytime cracks would form in concrete, as it naturally does, the limestone, when water would get in, would then fill the cracks. Fill the cracks. Gotcha. And then essentially, you know, act as a glue to keep it together over that long period of time. Yeah. But the thing is, it doesn't make it, sense to do that today because rebar concrete is cheaper and lasts longer. And plus, twofold. One, we generally don't build structures with the goal of having them last forever. Yeah. We generally build with the idea that it's going to be repurposed or rebuilt. Yeah, or we know that our buildings aren't going to need to last 2,000 years. Exactly. Like the Romans didn't really foresee as much change. Exactly. So, because they were building for it to last, it makes a lot more sense for them to do that. Yeah. We, on the other hand, have different motives, different uh, material reasons for building it, and also different financial constraints for building it. So, we could build it. We just have a lot of reasons not to. My favorite one is the Pantheon. And they're like, we don't know how they built the Pantheon. And it's like, we, we know pretty much exactly how they built the Pantheon. Mm -hmm. Like, they will say this about buildings that we have all of the sketches for. Yeah, but how do they build day. the pyramids? Oh, my God. <laughs> What fascinates me about those arguments is the absolute inability or lack of desire to imagine that people had so much time on their hands mm -hmm. that moving a several ton stone over the course of a week was not out of the realm of mm -hmm. logic for them. It's like, no, this is what we do. It's That's like... And when you believe that a literal God has instructed you to do it... You're going to do it. Oh, yeah. Like They forget that the Egyptians believed the pharaoh was a god-made man yeah. like you also that's to... an important thing to understand when you're asking the question why or how about these things now listen if somebody came out and said that there was in fact something we were missing about how the pyramids w were built and that we had it wrong mm -hmm. i would not be even remotely shocked yeah it would not surprise me yeah but the explanation we currently have is satisfactory yeah also, people forget that, like, when you're looking back in context that we have, you know, we're looking back with the knowledge of, like, oh, yeah, like, why would they want to do that? That's so hard when, like, today we have hydraulic massive mm -hmm. machines that can do it. Back then, that's all they had. There was no context of, like, this is so hard, there's another way to do this. Mm -hmm. It's like they came up with some ideas to make it easier, mm -hmm. but they didn't have the machinery or technology to be able to do it any other way. Also, I, I think one of the big things about this this theory that bugs me is they make claims that are really easy to kind of like throw to the back of your mind, but are important. Yeah. Because they're false. Yeah. And one of the big ones was he said that there was no evolution, no progress made in art between oh, the yeah. fall of Rome. Please dive into that. And the Renaissance. And it's just so not true because mm -hmm. you do have, you have three big ones, three big phases of art, which are Byzantine, late antiquity, Romanesque, which is kind of a Roman revival and Gothic. Gothic, of course, is when you see things like the Notre Dame, mm -hmm. that's a Gothic cathedral. These are distinct and they all appear at different times and they all evolve in different ways. They are not by any means there the whole time. Mm -hmm. There was no Gothic architecture in 300 AD. There was a lot of Gothic architecture in 1300 AD. There was really no Gothic architecture after 1600 AD. Yeah. Which means... There's no new Gothic yeah, architecture. There's yeah, there's Neo-Gothic. Yeah. Um, but what, you, what that means is that he makes a claim in there that would actually, you know, seem to be a good point. Oh my God, you're right. They, there really wasn't any evolution in art and music over a thousand years. Wow, that's a lot of time for that to not... It's not true. Mm. I mean, look at Byzantine-style art. That's that early medieval art that you see where there's the halos around everybody's heads. And, you know, it's not... It's more representative than it is detailed as yeah. opposed to the later kind of stuff. Yeah. That gives way to new art styles. If you look at an illuminated manuscript from 1200 AD versus one from 600 AD, they look different mm. because they aren't the same. They are inspired by different styles, different evolutions in art. Mm. And to say that there was no evolution in art is just an absolutely absurd statement. But everything else he says is so crazy 
that that easily, easily provably false one kind of just falls out to the wayside. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that's that's why I tried my best to address every single point he made, not just the big ones, is because I think that even if you are one of those people who's going to go to the example of, oh, well, you know, what, what about this very specific building? We don't know how that was built. I don't think you even need to go there. I think I I think I presented arguments against the foundational points of this that make it so that there's really no further explanation needed. Now, am I going to do it? Yes. <laughs> I am going to go into the second half of that video, and I am going to take every single example he gives, and I'm going to show you why he is full of it. Yeah. But I really shouldn't have to, because saying that the Irish are the origin of human society, because Ignatius Donnelly in the 1880s wrote about it, and because he said that Sanskrit and Irish are different, in such a way that it only makes sense if Sanskrit were the later language and not that Irish had derived from Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. Irish doesn't derive from Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. Nor does Sanskrit derive from Irish. They both derive from Indo-European. Mm. That alone, he got so many things wrong within the first, like, five minutes that the rest of it should be discounted offhand <laughs> because he just so clearly doesn't know what he's talking about about any topic. Yeah. But because people are are the way that they are, I got to go through every single one of them and be like, no, this is wrong and here's why. Speaking of that comment, there was one from All Dragons Are Sluts for 20 bucks a little bit ago that said, uh, the Olympic level of reaching the guy <laughs> did in that video was gold medal worthy. How can you be so confidently wrong? Painful to watch along on Twitch. Yeah. The, a lot of people who watch on Twitch kind of got a, a preview of what that video was going to be just mm -hmm. from me watching it and reacting in real time. Yeah. Um, second one's coming, and we've got another one on Graham Hancock coming out uh, next month. So, Yeah, but any thoughts from anybody in chat about the first episode of the Ancient Apocalypse? Uh of the teardown that we did yeah tear down but i don't know for, for anybody that watched it you know if you got thoughts i'd absolutely love to know yeah because i'd be curious to see especially because so have you you still haven't watched any of milo's videos on it have you no not going to i think that's an important thing to note as well is that yeah i'm not i'm not watching any of his stuff because i don't want it to um infect my opinion yeah not quite the word i wanted to use but affect affect would be better yeah i, I don't want it to I don't want to go in with any preconceived notions based on what he said. I want to find out why something is right or wrong for myself. I would love to. I, I'd love to see by the end of it where you two lie in comparison, because as, considering you're more on the, you know, uh, you're more willing to uh, defend some of the ideas that yeah. Graham has, you know, it, suggested over the years. Yeah. Whereas Milo is a little bit more to. Uh, he's Attacking. yeah he's he's taking him down yeah i yeah i want to i want to know what's right <laughs> i want to know what's <laughs> correct that is my goal i don't care how wacky it is i just need to know if it's correct or not <laughs> <laughs> i think that's what matters though the wackier the better though you know um but yeah i guess uh, i think today just because I, I can just keep going through this or it might be better to just switch to super chats and just take people's questions but yeah i mean sure. it's, I, I guess the the one other thing i want to address really quick in this one is the buried buildings because mm. that is one of the ones that gets brought up the most by people who are proponents of this theory. And every single example he provided, I was able to find that it wasn't mysterious at all. And that's one I think I really need to hammer in is that people come up with these pictures and they seem to show entire cities being excavated out of the dirt. Mm -hmm. In every single case I have found so far, it was super easy to understand what was going on. Either they were raising the streets yep. for some reason or another. Sometimes this was literally because they were building sewer systems and they needed to run the sewers under the streets. So sometimes they just had to raise entire city levels. Sometimes it was that you were, uh, you were expanding a city. For example, Omaha, Nebraska was one of those ones. Um, that was where the St. Mary Magdalene church was. Mm whole bunch of hills on the western side they wanted to expand the city what do they do they excavate out the hills to make it flat 
so they can build more stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can see the church, what they're suggesting is, you know, the church being dug out. It's not. It's that they had to build a new foundation for the church because they were digging out the entire hillside. Mm -hmm. There's the one uh, with the well, the Manhattan Company well, yep. where they're like, look at this huge well buried under everything. You know, wh when was this built? And it's like, well, it was built in the early 1800s by the Manhattan Company. And then, obviously, it's a well, so a lot of it's going to be underground. Yeah. And stuff got built on top of it as the city expanded. And then as they were excavating to build a new building, because, you know, you got to dig out the ground to put the foundation in, mm -hmm. they found the well again in 1926, like 100 years later. There was nothing odd about it. Yeah. Uh, Fort Pickens, he brings up. And he's like, you know, how, how are you going to tell me that in the early 1800s they built this fort? And the way he says it is so smug, too. That they built this fort on, you know, on soft sand. Like, yeah, right. Except sand only goes down one to three meters on the U.S. East Coast beaches, which is a, a piece of information it took me several seconds to find. <laughs> and when you build something, you establish a foundation. In fact, on the very website, it says it had a foundation built out of lumber put down there first. Hmm. So what they did was they dug it out and then they put the foundation in and they built on top of the foundation. And also it's a fort, which means it wasn't just that they went to some random spot on the beach and decided to build. They surveyed. They yeah. probably went for a spot that had bedrock very close to the bottom. How they... old is the Army Corps of Engineers? I don't know. Also, for those who would like to see the fluff ball, I will call him up. Yes. Come hither. Come hither, lad. Come here. Come on. The Corps of Engineers was created as a permanent distinct body on the 16th of March, 1802. Yep. Been around for a while. Look at Arch. Look how regal he looks. He's so mm -hmm. adorable. Do we want to fill the fill them in on his current status? Yeah, Archie had to have 37 of 42 teeth removed. He had expansive gun disease. Um, poor boy. He is, he is down some teeth. But he's doing okay. He's doing just fine. And why why did the teeth have to come? Uh, gum disease. His his breed is apparently prone to it. Like the vet even said that there was nothing I could have done to prevent it. it really? Jeez. Like, yeah, but he's a good boy. He's a very sweet little man. He's doing just fine, aren't you? Aren't you, buddy? Poor guy. All right. He's like me with my English teeth. Yeah. Uh, we got two twenty dollars super chats. Take them. Uh, the first one is uh, simply. From Omni Travis for twenty dollars says five G milk. Five G milk? Yes. Oh my god. I'm assuming it's five G and not five grams of milk. Five grams of milk? Five grams of milk. It would not be nearly enough milk. Not even remotely. I need I need considerably more milk than that. Archie, would I you like milk. five grams of milk? He looks like he's seen war now. He does, yeah. He's just kind of sitting at attention. He's getting Vietnam flashbacks from <laughs> the vet earlier. Poor guy. vet at nom <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, Party Legged 1776 for $21.52 says, I liked the Egg Chin Apocalypse, Apocalypse episode, and I felt that it was fair also getting a WHU delivered this week, and how is the fluff ball doing? What you is WHU? Oh, we have the Windusy Hunter shirt now. Oh, nice. Yeah, it says Windusy Hunting Unit. Got it. It's WHU, and on the back it has a, a sigil with the Laurel Lodge logo and a shield with two snow shovels. I love that. Yeah, it says uh, Via Venatoris Gloria Out Morse, which means the way of the hunter, glory, or death. I love that. Yeah. I love that so much. He's uh, a good boy. Well, we know, what, we know how the boy's doing. Yes. Uh, also, yeah, love that you got that. So I guess we'll transition to Super Yeah, time. might as well. Cool. Uh... Emily Dalberty for four ninety nine earlier on said, "Listening to this, playing Minecraft quite often, and I gotta say, it's one of my favorite pastimes in these trying times." Oh well, thank you. I'm glad you like the show. Glad to hear it, and thanks for celebrating your first super chat with us. Uh, also, let us know what you're doing in Minecraft because I may or may not have a mild addiction to it. Though I don't get <laughs> enough time to play anything lately, I still like to hear about what people are doing. Uh, Gizzy, not Glizzy, for nine ninety nine says, "Y'all boys get my email on the recurring nightmares I've been having." If you sent it to the lorelodge at gmail.com, we got the email. I just have to look at it. Yeah, we yeah. just need to go through it. Uh, Bobcat for $5 says, You were awesome on Pop Culture Crisis. The most awesome guest host ever. Everyone agrees. They all tell me. The most awesome guest host ever. Everyone agrees. They all tell me. 
Thank you. I had a great time. I would love to go back anytime they need me. They know they can have me. So, and if you need, you know, if you need to see me talk about pop culture for two and a half hours for five days, there's content for you. Right. <laughs> Your boy Bussy for 199 said, Lost Empire of the Tartus. Exactly. It, it's the only possible solution. Yeah, maybe the real Tartaria was the window C we made along the way. <laughs> That's all time. Uh, Ori Clough for 499 says, Storming over here where I'm at. Perfect time to listen to you guys. Ooh, the storm. Yeah, I don't know about y'all, but storms, thunderstorms, rain are, are probably yeah. my favorite weather. Um, I guess I'm, I could be just weird. Uh, Richard Henderson for 499 says, didn't Nikola Tesla have a device that could transmit electricity over the air to coils? I have heard that. I don't know what the historicity of it is. So to be fair, Tesla coils are a thing that exists mm -hmm. uh, and they can do that. If you set two up next to each other and they are of opposing charge, electricity will jump in an arc from one to the other and if you just have a single one electricity will fly off and if you have a conducting element near it you can actually program that tesla coil mm -hmm. to release the exact amount of charge to be able to the sound that it makes make a specific musical note mm -hmm. and the fun video that i watch uh, every now and again to remind me of how cool science is sometimes is somebody took that and they programmed the Tesla coil to play Thunderstruck by ACDC <laughs> with electricity. That's pretty cool. It was really cool. Uh, but yeah, so that may be what it is. I don't know about the larger implementation of that, but Tesla coils exist. You can do that. Who's asking about, uh, I saw somebody who asked about uh, the Red Dragon. It's because I'm, I'm part Welsh. Yes. I Welsh flag. Um, focused on Celtic history when I was in college. Yes. Yeah, calm down, Biff, and all <laughs> that. Dude, you growling at me is not intimidating anymore. You have no teeth. Have you forgotten that? Did you forget that you have no teeth? I think he just, he's mm -hmm. jealous mm -hmm. that yep. you yeah, now have right. them. The poor boy. He's doing fine. Bam for $10.76 said, cool episode on the flat earth of historical <laughs> research. Uh, have you considered doing episodes that are three smaller topics given 20 minutes each instead of one hour long episodes? Also clown research. Right. I do need to research the clowns. That was a thing. Um, Thank you for the reminder. Three ep uh, honestly, that might be a good a good way to handle weeks where we don't have like a full hour long topic. And, we, and maybe the folklore topics. Yeah, sure. That might be a way to do those as well. Yep. Uh, let's see, Richard Anderson for 499 said, I hate how they underestimate the ingenu ingenuity of people back then and their dedication to their creations. Honestly, it, yeah. it, I think there's there's really something to be said for the, the apathy we have today. I think there's a lot of people who look at this old stuff and they go, well, why would they bother doing that? Mm -hmm. Because they themselves don't have the drive. But you've got to remember that this is a, these were very different times. People had very different priorities and outlooks i mean you're talking about a time when it was very very much an ever-present factor in your life that the next generation was not simply going to survive yeah that you you were fighting every single day to keep yourself alive and everyone else and when you look at the way they built their buildings mm -hmm. when you look at the way that they constructed their stories it's all built to last yeah and we don't understand that today you know Today we look at it and we go, well, what's the point of building these pyramids? Mm -hmm. Like, who cares? Back when the Great Pyramids were built, do you know how much writing was going on? Not a lot. Not a lot. It, no. it seems like they had, you know, hieroglyphics at that point, or at least a proto form. Yep. But Khufu, as far as he knew, was not going to be a ton of written information about his reign, but you want to know what was going to last a really long time? Big old pyramid. Yep. You want somebody to remember how important you were, you leave a physical mark on the world. Mm -hmm. And so that was <laughs> some people, we still do it to this day. People have buildings named after them mm -hmm. for donations, you know? Oh, yeah. People people don't, like, think about how 
our priorities as a a race, mm-hmm. a species, have changed. Yeah, like the human race is not valuing the longevity of our stories as much as we used to. Well, partially but, because we have you know so much data technology, but also I think partially because of just apathy. And but it's an interesting contradiction though, because though values and priorities and general cultural and societal norms have changed a lot, we as humans have not changed. Because we still have values, we still have goals, we still have needs. It's just certain needs and goals and survival requirements that we have today, A, we didn't always have. True. B, we only really started having in the past 100 years. Think about how how bad the infant mortality rate was only 100 years ago. The main reason so many people had so many kids back in the day was because you knew most of them weren't going to make it to 10 years old. Yep. I mean, it's it's crazy. And That's that... also the other thing. Like, the average lifespan in the Middle Ages, everyone thinks about it, They're like, oh, people only live to be 30. No. <laughs> what actually happened was most people died before the age of, like, 12. Yep. Or if you didn't, you probably lived into your 60s. Yeah. So there's a, there's a bottleneck where a lot of people died in childhood. And then if you made it pat you if you made it to adolescence, you were probably gonna live a long life. Yeah. Human the human experience has changed in such a massive way. And that is another thing that came up as I was reading through these these stories and um these theories and all of that was people don't think about the little differences. Mm-hmm. Just the, the very simple stuff, like the question, you know, why don't we have any original manuscripts from Pliny? It's like, because they were writing on animal skin or papyrus. Papyrus yeah. degrades, animal skin, you, you only got so much of it. And a lot of the time when you had something that was written down and you were like, I have something really important I got to write down, you would just scrape it off the paint or you paint over it you know there were all sorts of different things people would do we are now using x-ray technology to read under what is currently on the pages of these manuscripts and what we're finding is even older manuscripts Mm. underneath them it's people do not grasp how different life was also like i think people forget how low the literacy rate was yeah it was a uh, if I remember what my professors told me correctly, it was about 50% in Norway and Sweden. That was high. That was unbelievably high. What was like the average, do you think? Like 5%. The only people who could read in the Middle Ages, like consistently, were the clergy and the nobility. Hmm. That makes sense. The average person couldn't read. If you were in the artisan class, maybe. And you think about 5% at that time, the population size at that time was a heck of a lot smaller yeah. too we're talking about thousands of people yeah in europe Crazy. not not hundreds of thousands we're talking like thousands thousands tens of thousands wild mm-hmm. next question is from cooper for 199 says i need a the walking dead-esque apocalypse game plan Ooh. well i mean do you apocalypse want apocalypse survival guide that'd be fun yeah video yeah (laughs) whenever we get around to doing them what we do have next weekend we're going to be recording all the drunk folks true true. and uh our first unboxing true yeah first fan mail unboxing so that'll be fun we will be doing that christine pambino bennett for 1991 hi mom uh archie looks like he's recovering well we miss him he is recovering well he seems like he's doing all right hi buddy he perked his head up cutie boy uh, the Highwayman for $10 says, The mud flood thing made me think of the Great Molasses Flood of 1919. <laughs> if you want some weird, horrifying history, look into it. Keep up the good work, fellas. Yeah, that's... Uh, I can't remember precisely where that was, but there was a large um, molasses leak incident where a basically a tidal wave of molasses spilled through some city streets and killed a bunch of people. That is insane. Yeah. Did you hear about the I-95 collapse? Yeah. Yeah wolf uh thousand foot deep end which is a great <laughs> username for five dollars remember that username no question just wanted to say hi i'm a new fan you glean from pop culture crisis also shout out to bobcat he's right about your guest host well thank you i'm glad you uh glad you decided to come hang out here i remembered you from over there also my mom seems to want to know if archie will howl yes come here buddy i haven't tried it yet i hope he still can 
You ready? Good boy. Good, Good boy. boy. He can still do it. Such a good puppy. I was worried that he like he wouldn't be able to, that like him not having teeth would yeah. make it hard for I him. I hope it doesn't but hurt. No, I think he would have he probably wouldn't have done it if it hurt. Fair. Good boy. Poor guy. <laughs> Girk roll play for five dollars says those level four plays. <laughs> Anyways, this question is for both of you. Preferred type of ancient firing type? Flintlock, matchlock, etc. For guns? I guess, yeah, for like muskets and things like that. I mean, flintlock's better than matchlock. I, so wait, define ancient, because I really like the, um... There's something fun about the cap and ball re revolvers of, like, right before, like, the Civil War era, like, right before they switched to cartridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just something cool about it. Yeah, I think my favorite the breech. I think the breech loading ones. Oh yeah, those cool. are fun. I think my favorite part about it though, specifically, was did you ever watch the show Hell on Wheels? They really did a good job of portraying no. it. What they would do back then, it was like right before cartridges, uh, with the revolvers because they would have to load the cylinders mm -hmm. specifically um, with caps and everything. Instead of reloading the cylinders if they were in a gunfight, they would just carry around extra preloaded cylinders. So they'd pop open the revolver, pull out the whole cylinder, put in a new <laughs> one, and get it going. It's wild. Yeah, it was really cool. So that's probably my favorite. Uh, the Freak for $5 says, I'm currently in Ohio working a pipeline job, pipeline job, and I say this with all of the sadness and disappointment a human possibly can. Ohio is, in fact, real. Um, I'm going to need to see video evidence before I believe this. Yep. Agamemnon's Noms gym bag for five dollars and two cents. You understand what I like. Did you meet the Ian? <laughs> How much of your hair did you rip out? I did meet Ian. Ian's a very he's a very nice guy, very curious. Uh, you know, it, one of those guys who will ask you a question and you can tell that he is genuinely invested in the answer you give him. Um, so you know, for I, I know as much as people will often joke about Ian kind of going off off the rails with stuff, but. He was a nice guy. Um, I would love to get to sit and have a, a a longer conversation with him. Unfortunately, just you know, it was the the time that the times that everybody was working, I was basically not able to talk to people all that much because mm -hmm. usually, as everybody was getting the day started, the people who do the show at night, we were starting to actually do the show. Got so it. I would usually have like thirty minutes where I got to talk to people. Nice. Uh, also, random aside, but for the people in the chat who are like car people, I'm looking at getting new wheels and tires for my car at some point in the not too distant future because it needs them. Uh, but I'm trying to figure out how to pair tire size with wheel size properly. I'm looking to get uh, 20 by 10s in the front and 20 by 11s in the back. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, let me know. I just want a little more context as I do more research. Thank you, everybody. Anyway, uh, NC Squash for $10 says. Uh, these last two months have been the worst of my life so oh. far. Sorry to hear that. Y'all's content has been much needed way to keep my mind occupied. It's helped me. It's helped keep me sane. Thank you both for the hard work you do. Oh, well, thank you. And I, I hope things get better for you. You know, I, I would I would say it always gets better, but I know that doesn't really help. <laughs> yeah. No. I, I, we're just really glad that yeah. we're being able to provide some form of positivity. Something, yeah. So, yeah. Remember, keep pushing. You're more stubborn than the universe. Yes. <laughs> I've started listening to a bit more David Goggins recently, uh -huh. and that's become a problem for me because I realized that, like, I really like that mentality. No, no, no. You just listen to the Shia LaBeouf do it thing every True. morning yeah, in the shower. That's fair. Just, that's, fair. that's To the point where I can stare in a mirror and just see him exactly. reflect back yeah, in me. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're if right. you're not visualizing Shia LaBeouf in the shower with you, yeah. screaming... Do it! Yeah. While you lather yourself, yes, I, I really don't think that you're quite achieving the alpha male mentality that you're seeking. I fully agree. I also think that I'm probably going to need to w build and wear one of the Shia LaBeouf paper mache heads mm -hmm. from the uh, Shia LaBeouf music video. I think that would help. But you know what? What I think is really key to 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 embodying the mentality of just do it mm -hmm. is I think we need to consume Shia LaBeouf's flesh. You might be right. Yeah. I think that's the only way to really become one with Shia LaBeouf. Exactly. We need to actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. I think you're right. Yeah. 
Taco Meat for nine ninety nine says found a book, and from... that's how we'll eat it. <laughs> yes, yeah. Ooh, there we go. Uh, found a book from eighteen ninety six written in code. I read Ooh, it. it has something to code? do with Freemasonry. So I was wondering if you knew anything. It's called Solomon and His Followers: A Valuable Aid to the Memory. <laughs> draws notebook <laughs> uh, um, i don't even know where to write this down here's a random one what was it uh it's called solomon and his followers of valuable aid and then it says to the memory but that's all lowercase so i'm assuming that's not part of the title correct me if i'm wrong <laughs> jd Petty said aiden no that makes you a wendigo so be uh, it. I will do what I must. <laughs> uh, thank you for your first super chat as well, by the way. Thank you. Uh, Richard Henderson says for one ninety nine favorite type of ancient bladed weapon. Ooh, I really like um, Brythonic Celtic swords, mm -hmm. but I'm also partial to the Copus, which is it was a Greek uh, short sword that mm -hmm. they would carry alongside their spears as okay. in when they were fighting as hoplites. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a rounded blade, so uh, basically the, the tip of the blade would be here, and then it would go like this. Oh, So it was a concave. That, it's a concave yes. blade, but this side would be, would have a bulge to it, and then down here, it would taper. Interesting. So it was a very good weapon for slicing. It would chop through basically anything because of the weight. Mm -hmm. Not as good for stabbing. Got it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the, the hand-and-half slash two-handed swords those are really fun mm -hmm. but i do also really like the oh wait i also really like the roman gladiuses but just because of my my interest and love mm -hmm. for age of sail naval warfare mm -hmm. cutlass is right up there for true me. Ooh, you know what also the falcs that's a cool one as well what's that uh they were you'd have a long handle usually about you know yay long mm -hmm. so you could get you know different grips yeah but you would have a long blade like three or four feet mm -hmm. and it would curve that way uh so, so it's curve like, away from you so like a big scythe essentially yeah and what it was good for was it could get over a shield ah got it that makes sense Oof. Uh, yeah the romans had a lot of trouble fighting against them that doesn't surprise me omni travis for 20 bucks thank you says uh ask your vet if the albino river otter can safely <laughs> do that dogs with uh dogs will hurt the heck out of themselves they just love to have fun also, Captain Ball is awesome. My dad left me a 45 pistol and a 50 Ooh. cal rifle bought from Sears. That's, That's cool. cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll check with the vet to make sure he's safe to hell. But, yeah, smart. Also, that reminds me. When I was up uh, up at the yurt last weekend, mm -hmm. beavers are wild. Like, I forgot just how cool they are. Did yeah. I show you any of the pictures? They clear cut full sections of forest. Mm -hmm. Like, drop trees, like, that big mm -hmm. in diameter. And they were gnawing on them, whatever, but they were also, they were moving all of these trees from that big a diameter to smaller over to a dam. From a stream, they built a 10-acre lake. And they were literally, they were not only moving the small branches mm -hmm. over, but the big trees, they were chopping into mm -hmm. sections to move over. Mm -hmm. It's just so cool. Yeah, beavers but, are cool. No, they're so cool. Sick, yeah. dude. Anyway, that, that's me nerding out. About beavers. Yes. Uh, Kellen, the official data for 556. Five, Beautiful. Uh, boys, I need shirt sizes. Also, black powder revolvers love to chain fire, uh, where all the chambers fire at the same time and take fingers or hands. Interesting. Can't say I'm shocked, considering yeah. there probably weren't great tolerances in the engineering <laughs> back then. So, uh, As for shirt sizes, I am 5'9 and 195 pounds, and I wear a large in our shirts. Yeah, uh, I'm like small to medium in shirts i'm you wear five a, six you wear a medium in our shirts okay yeah i'm five six 145 at the moment so yeah so i'm a small boy <laughs> you should be able to see a sizing chart on the website though there cool. should be one there uh ace the horse mom for 499 says you guys rock also same here with the sanity thing you've been my uh -huh. greatest hyper or latest hyper fixation you and stakugi uh thank you for the sanity that. Yeah, thank you so much for, you know, staying tuned, and, and we're glad that we can be beneficial in your life, and hopefully we continue to do so. It's always rewarding, but also slightly, I, I guess surprising is the best way to describe it when, when we get feedback like that, because, yeah. you know, 
because we don't see anybody in person, we just see a camera and everything like that. You know, we, we know you guys are here, but it, it's crazy to think that we really do have an impact. And it's always, it's always really re rewarding to hear that, you know, we, we are genuinely being either educational or entertaining or, or, you know, even more so beneficial in somebody's life. So, you know, thank you for your words because A, it's good encouragement. Um, and it's, it's a reminder that what we do really does impact lives, mm -hmm. uh, especially when, you know, uh, we don't get to see that directly, but it's, it's, it's nice to know that that is true. So thanks. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to like, I just saw somebody said, uh, the milk is the soul of the body. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm not entirely sure. Somebody said, I would rather follow the beef than Andrew Tate. Like, like the beef. I, I believe Shia commercial? LaBeouf. Oh. He is Shia the beef. Fair. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that uh, that just about takes us to the end. I think so. Yeah. All right. I know it was a bit of a shorter show tonight, but, um, you know, honestly, I I'm so tired, and. <laughs> Vampire from Pluto just said, "Have you all considered doing a live show?" I'm not sure what you mean by that. <laughs> I thought that's what we were doing right now. Or did you mean like live on a stage in front of people? I'm going to assume that's probably because if that's what you meant, which would make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, we're just not sure where or when and if yeah. people would actually pay to come see that. Yeah, because we recognize that we've got people who watch from like all over the country. And yeah, it. We'd love to have as many people as we could in one space, but we also recognize that the travel would be difficult for people. Yeah. So. We do Philly. We have to get a venue. Yeah. I think I think what we'd probably do is we need to get ourselves a table at like a convention of some kind. That makes sense. Which at this point we probably could do. Yeah, that's a good point. Even, even like a Comic Con we could probably do. I guess you're right. We should look into that. I, always, I keep forgetting that we're technically like of that size yeah. now. Yeah. 225,000 subs. Yeah. Yeah, probably. We should look into that. You probably should. All right, we did get a couple more super chats just before we go. Uh, <laughs> NC Squatch for five says, milk "When do we get a milk militia tea? As soon as I remember to make one, because that's a great idea." Second one was Kel in the official data for three sixty nine, who said Ohio is better than France, and that is true, <laughs> because France is just the worst. Uh, the best thing about France this weekend was uh, the 24-hour Le Mans, watching that Camaro oh, yeah. just absolutely fry all of the other GT cars and even some of the hyper cars. That was, as someone who owns and drives daily a Camaro, that was really fun to watch. Uh, Thousand Foot Deep End said, uh, for five, I seem to have made a name for myself. Aiden, would you like me to compliment your shirt color choices too? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something at the beginning of the show, but I was what? like, oh, we'll, we'll leave What it were you going to say? Oh, one okay. of us has to change. Wait, are we wearing the same color shirt? Is that not? Oh, uh, it's like it's either a very dark green or a black. I'm also wearing black. It's either a really faded black or a very dark green. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not gonna say what I thought it was. <laughs> what do you no, think? I'm, of I'm embarrassed. <laughs> what do you think of no, I'm embarrassed now because <laughs> I was so far off. What did you think it was? What? Navy blue. That happened. It's okay. I thought it was navy blue. I could be wrong. I don't think you and everybody else are wrong. <laughs> I, think, I think it might be me. Fair. Uh, all right. At well, least you're capable of knowing that. Thank you back to the... Thank you for coming back to Colorblindness Lodge, I guess. <laughs> right. no. I'm colorblind. It's not my fault. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>